Welcome to this Facebook Live. I am so excited to be doing this today. Um, for those of you watching from Facebook, uh, you're the Walker Shortbread audience, and my name is Ashley Marie. I run a blog and YouTube channel sharing all kinds of recipes, and I'm so excited to be here today and doing this recipe in, uh, in partnership with Walker Shortbread. From those of you watching on my YouTube page, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I am so excited today. I have been doing this partnership with Walker Shortbread for the past couple of months, and it I was so excited when I first got the email from them because I grew up on Walker Shortbread. Walker Shortbread is my mom's favorite. She always had it at the holidays and at parties. Um, and I, and let's face it, their shortbread is amazing. For those of you who didn't know, Walker Shortbread has been using the same recipe for the last 120 years uh, with four ingredients. Like it doesn't get much simpler, much more amazing, much more delicious. Butter, flour, sugar, salt. That's the secret. And it is still a family owned business, which I love supporting because I grew up working in my family business. And now I run a family business and my kids work for me. So it's really fun to work with brands who I align with so well. So uh, to get started, uh, if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from so I can see where we have people joining us from today. I'm super excited about this and I'm going to make sure that I can see all the comments that everything's working and then we'll get started with the recipe. So um, let's make sure everything's going, it looks like it's going okay over on my end. Let me know if you can hear me okay and see me okay. Uh, I don't want anybody to miss anything. I'm super excited about today's recipe. Uh, tuning in, what am I making tonight? Trucker, that's a great question. Today we are making uh, dessert lasagnas. Now normally you make dessert lasagnas in a big like 9 by 13 pan, but today I'm actually making little mini dessert lasagnas, and the reason for that is... Um, I'm using these amazing and delicious shortbreads as the base of our dessert lasagnas. So I'm actually making two different sizes. We're going to use the brand new Walker shortbread, the salted caramel, as a base for our, uh, our for our big, I just say big, but they're still really small. They're still minis. And then we're using these little itty bitty mini ones for even smaller bite sized uh, dessert lasagnas. So I'm excited. And we're going with the flavors. We're going to do a uh, caramel no bake cheesecake layer. And then we're going to do the chocolate pudding layer and top it all with whipped cream. So as you can see, Walker Shortbread has a ton of different sizes and flavors and shapes. And they're all so beautiful. It makes it entertaining. So nice. Uh, as you can see, I have this nice little platter all ready to go. I have had to swap my kids' hands away all day because they love eating these so much. All right. I am, I think we have everything ready to go and that it's all working. So yay. Okay. I'm seeing comments. Uh, I think so. I'm not seeing any comments on Facebook still. So if you are on Facebook and you are watching, go ahead and leave me a comment just so I know it's working. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, Shelly from Carolina, you can see and hear just fine. So excited about that. Okay. So to get started, depending on what size cookie base you want to use will depend on the pan size that you want to grab. Now this is a jumbo muffin tin and these are uh, mini muffin tins. The cookies didn't fit great in the traditional muffin liner and so that's why I'm using these two. So let's get started with that. So uh, let me grab a cookie. So here's the cookie size that we are working with. And when I put the cookies in the tins themselves, um, there was a lot of space around them. But when I put them in like a regular muffin tin, they were too big for that. So that's why I went with a jumbo. And then I tried it with some jumbo liners and it fit great. So that's what we're gonna, that's what I ended up doing. Now this recipe either makes uh, 12 of the jumbo size or uh, 36 of the mini size. So this, the best part about this is that you don't have to make a crust or do any baking. This is completely no bake because the cookies are gonna be our crust. So I just put them in and I put them in upside down, but you can put them either way. Um, if it's either way. Uh, but put them in the bottom and press them down in just to make sure that they are nice and fit. And you can see that now that we have the liners in here, 
it's a little bit more snug. So show those both ways, upside down and flat, so you can see what's going on. And oops, I dropped some cookies. All right, so then for this size pan, we're going to use the adorable little minis. And they just fit right in the bottom of the pan. So today we're going to do half and half, half in the mini size and half in the jumbo pan size. Now I didn't put the liners in this one because the liners then made it too tight and I was a little bit worried about getting them out the first time that I made this recipe, but uh, I just used a little spatula and they popped right out after being set up in the fridge. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, I also didn't spray them because I don't want any kind of spray to affect the cookies. And since we're not baking them, just refrigerating them and just letting the desserts uh, set, it's not a problem. Okay, so we're doing half here and half there. Now you could use any shortbread as a crust uh, for these as long as it fit into whatever container you were working with. All right, so now I'm going to set these aside and we're going to make our first uh, layer. So I don't know, I mean, I've been making dessert lasagnas my whole life, but I don't know where they got the name dessert lasagna. I mean, I get it. It's a dessert and it's layered like a lasagna, but I have had comments from people over the years that thought it was really weird. So if you have another, I've also heard these desserts, these layered desserts called uh, dream desserts. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you have heard these called as you've seen them throughout your life. So we're going to start with the no-bake cheesecake layer. And to get started with that, we're going to do uh, cream cheese. Now I'm just doing four ounces of cream cheese. And we're doing half a cup of powdered sugar. And we're going to beat this together. Now you don't want the powdered sugar to kind of explode everywhere. So one of the things that I do is I kind of pulse it just to get it a slow start. Oops, let's go a little, there we go. So that it doesn't just spray powdered sugar everywhere. Because powdered sugar clouds, you know, you breathe those in and then you end up coughing. And that's not fun. But kind of pulsing it until it just comes together a little bit usually does the trick. And then you can go full on, make it nice and creamy. Now the reason that we want to beat this first before adding any of our other ingredients is you want the... Um, you want the cream cheese to be perfectly smooth before we add anything else. If there's even a little bit of chunk left, that's going to end up in your final outcome because everything we add is going to make this just a little bit thinner. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're using a spatula and scraping the sides and making sure that there are no cream cheese chunks left anywhere. Now, we want this to be a uh, caramel flavor. You can leave this plain. You can actually flavor this uh, cheesecake layer with whatever you want. I am going with salted caramel because the cookies, the shortbread is a salted caramel shortbread. So I recommend going with a really thick caramel because if you go with anything that's just a little bit on the thin side, it's going to thin this down a lot. And we don't want that. So get out our spatula. You just say layer dessert, Sharon. That, uh, you know what, that's what I always call them too. And this whole dessert lasagna thing has become popular. And so that's what I call them now, but that's not what I call them growing up. Hello from Delaware. Hello, Joyce. Tina, hi, nice to see you. Carrie, thanks for joining us. All right, this is just a couple tablespoons, but it's enough to give it a nice caramely flavor. And there we go. That looks so good and luscious. Now, depending on the type of caramel that you use, this could be a little darker or a little bit lighter. Now, I have a homemade caramel syrup that I like to use, but if you're going to use a store-bought caramel syrup, just make sure that it's uh, not, not thin and runny like some brands are. Get the nice thick, 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 thick one. All right, next up, we're going to... Um, 
we're going to add uh, some whipped cream to this. That's going to give it its lightness. Um, and the cream cheese is going to help hold it so that the whipped cream doesn't deflate. Uh, I already beat up all the whipped cream because when I've whipped cream in the past on live videos one, it takes a little bit of time and it's really noisy. So I already pre-beat that, but I just sweetened mine with powdered sugar and a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna add this right, let's see, just right in there. You want to make sure that the whipped cream has been beaten to stiff peaks before you do this. And a lot of recipes will tell you to fold this in, which is great, but I find that beating it is just fine. So I'm just gonna use my hand mixer. You just don't wanna overbeat it. So as soon as it's incorporated, And if it's not completely, um, if it's not completely stirred together, that's when you can kind of come in here and do the folding. But I found that when I was trying to fold it all by hand, that cream cheese mixture is so thick that it was taking me so long to get them folded together that I was actually deflating the whipped cream myself. So just by continuing that beating process, I felt like that actually made it a lot easier. So now we're going to bring back in our pans. And I'm using a mini cookie scoop, but you do not have to use that. You can just use a normal spoon. I just like to make sure that I'm getting things as even as possible. And I found that this was the easiest way to go. So this one is a number 60. And I'm going to do a one number 60 scoop over the minis, um, but I'm gonna do multiple scoops on the larger one, whoops. And then once they're in, I'm going to spread them out. So they're not gonna look just like this. <laughs> All right, so over here on this side, I'm gonna do about uh, three scoops, because the big ones are about three times the size of the smaller bite-sized ones. So does anybody have any questions uh, so far? June, hi, it's so nice to see you. Andrea, hello from Chicago, nice to see you too. I was just in Chicago a couple weeks ago and I ate the most amazing food. Uh, Cynthia on Facebook from North Carolina, I used to live there in the Raleigh area. I really loved it. Uh, the YouTube sound isn't good. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you so much for letting me know. And you love Walker shortbread. Oh, it just doesn't get any better than Walker shortbread. I always get the Christmas tin at Christmas time because it has a ton of different options and flavors. And it, um, they're also pretty and they make great serving platters. And they're easy to take to an event without having to do a lot to them to make them feel elegant. And I don't know. Honestly, most of the time I hide them and I eat them for myself. <laughs> it was one of those things. Maybe it's because my mom loved them so much that, and she used to hide them from us and eat them for herself. So to me, in my mind, they're like, you know, a, a special treat, a uh, special mom treat, I guess. Uh, I like to enjoy them with like a cup of hot chocolate while I'm reading a good book. Usually, I don't know. There's not a lot of places with five kids uh, that I can hide out, um, but I don't know. I have a couple secret drawers in my office, and every time my kid finds my secret treats drawer stash, I have to find a new one. Um, I just redid my office back in December, and oops, I'm almost at the end. And they have found all of my stashes, but I have a new drawer. I just started last week, so we'll see how quickly. Right now it is filled with Walker shortbread. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to take a spoon and we're just going to spread these out. This should be fairly thick, not too thick, um, but it should also spread really nicely. But we don't want, you don't want to really jam it into the sides of this because we need to unmold this later. So 
I'm really just making sure that I don't have a lot of gaps down to the cookies, but I'm not trying to, um, to make it too hard to get out later because we want to be able to unmold these really easily. So just spread until it's a nice even layer. That will take a second and then we're going to stick these in the fridge and work on the next layer. So am I the only one? Do any of you guys have secret treat drawers where you hide, where you hide treats from other people? I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I love doing it. Turning in from Wilsonville, Oregon. Oh, I used to live in Oregon. I graduated from high school there. I was born and raised in the Portland area. I love it there. It's so pretty. I was just there uh, back in April. It was so nice to visit again. Hello from Delaware. You know, Delaware is actually one of the states I have never been to, funny enough. My family has been to all the states, but I, I have not. I did a, a tour in an RV when I first went to college, so they've been everywhere, and I need to still go everywhere. So I'm going to stick these in the fridge uh, while we work on the next layer, and that will help them just set up a little bit. Honestly, it's not the most necessary thing in the world. You can just quickly make the pudding and add it right on top. But since we're going to be taking some time making it, I'm just going to stick these in the fridge. And, you know, if I can find room in the fridge, it's always the worst part. It's finding the fridge space that you think you have, but then you don't. Okay. So the next layer is the pudding layer. Now you can, again, make any flavor that you want because we're working with the uh, salted caramel chocolate chunk shortbread as our base. I went with chocolate. So we have, this is a, a small box of pudding, so like 3.9 ounces and a cup and a half of milk. We want this a little bit on the thicker side. Oh, you love my hair. Thank you so much. Kathy, you're new here from Dover, Pennsylvania. Nice. Uh, no, you married off the kids. You don't have to hide the food. June, I my oldest is 18, so I still got a little bit of time. My youngest is eight before they are married off and not finding my food. I'm actually, so notice how I kind of go slow at the beginning because, you know, you don't want your pudding to be chunky or like the powdered sugar fly everywhere but I think everybody knows how to make pudding so there's not a lot of tips or tricks for this one I don't know I mean I would hope most people know how to make pudding uh you're tuning uh, uh your voice is coming across garbled oh no it looks like those of you on Facebook uh are the lucky ones because it sounds like the youtube one is not working on the audio so i'm glad that the facebook one is working on audio so i just stir this until it's a decent thickness and i'm not seeing any like small little granular chunks of the pudding you can of course use your hand mixer but then you'd have to wash the beaters and i'm so i just use a whisk it's not that big of a deal it doesn't take that much time Uh, my hair, it just sounds good, I like shortbread. All right, I think I'm all caught up. <gasps> Houston, Candace, I used to live in Houston. Okay, sounds like I've lived everywhere. I pretty much have. I've lived in seven states, moved 34 times, lived in Japan, uh, and then I love to travel. <laughs> so, I yeah. Um, hello from Charlotte, Carolina. You can see in here just fine. All right. So this is looking good. Nice and thick. So now we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to add it to the top of our no-bake cheesecake layers. So for this one, I have that same size 60 cookie scoop. And I'm going to scoop two of these onto the larger one. But then I also have this little mini size 100 scoop that I'm going to use for the mini cheesecakes. Um, I found that if I stuck with that size 60, uh, one of those was just a little bit too big for the minis, in my opinion. But again, you don't have to use the scoops, right? You can just spoon it in however you like. Um, I just, I don't know. I find it easier to go that route, so. 
Uh, plus, I want the cream cheese layer, the cheesecake layer, to be just a little bit thicker than the pudding layer. That's why I'm doing more of the um, more of the cheesecake and less of the pudding. But if you want your layers to be the same size, you can totally do that too. And then as, again, like before, as soon as these are on, I'm going to go spread them. Oh, I have some amazing news. <laughs> I'm a dork. Uh, Walker Shortbread actually has a coupon code and it's uh, in the description box on Facebook and it's in the description box below on YouTube. Uh, if you use the code Ashley Marie, you have to remember to spell my name right, A-S-H-L-E-E, -E, Marie, uh, at the Walker Shortbread online store, you will get 20% off for the whole month of July. So it's the perfect time to get all of your entertaining shortbread cookies uh, for summer parties and back to school parties and fall parties. And what are people saying now that it's July? It's like, oh, it's now that the fourth is over, it's back to school and Halloween and Thanksgiving. And then, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. <laughs> all right? It's amazing how I always feel there's really not a time in the year where it isn't busy. But you always feel like, oh, if I could just get through this stage, the next stage won't be as busy. But it always is. There's always something to celebrate. There's always an event to do. There's always, there's always something. So for me, having five kids, obviously, there's always a birthday party somewhere on the horizon. Um, and I mean, I love entertaining. I have mentioned that many, many times for those of you who have followed me before. I love throwing my kids parties. I love throwing holiday parties. I love any chance to make themed foods and make treats for other people. So this is just right up my alley. And I love uh, delicious and pretty food. And that's one of the reasons that I love working with Walker so much. The recipe uses simple, straight ingredients, no preservatives, no additives, uh, kosher dairy. And so I feel like I can give this food to myself and to other people and to my kids without having to uh, worry about what's in it or wonder if it's going to make somebody sick or it's just pure delicious food that tastes amazing and is really pretty. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing and we are going to spread this. You don't have to go all the way to the edge if you don't want to. We just kind of want to give it a nice even spread and we're going to do that with all of these again and then refrigerate it. Now in a traditional dessert lasagna they also do a layer of whipped cream right now as well and the first time I made these I did that. I added a layer of whipped cream right to the top and then when I pulled them out to serve them, I noticed that the chocolate pudding, the coloring had kind of like bled into the cheesecake layer as well as into the whipped cream layer. Um, and so I, and I didn't love it. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I refrigerated them just like this. I'm gonna put plastic wrap on top so that the pudding doesn't dry out and get all nasty. Um, but I'm just gonna put plastic wrap on these, refrigerate them, and then right before serving, so right now, uh, I'm going to uh, add fresh whipped cream. And I just, I, I just found that that, for me, was an easy thing to do and delicious. But if you do want to put your whipped cream on right now so you don't have to worry about it later, I would definitely let these set in the fridge for about half an hour just to let that pudding get a little bit of a, not crust, but uh, not be quite so fresh before you add that whipped cream layer so you don't get that color bleeding through as much but just a personal preference and tip or trick for these okay we're almost done so a full batch that i just made would make again uh 24 of these jumbo mini sized dessert lasagnas or 36 of these super mini bite sized dessert lasagnas so or you can do what i'm doing now and do half and half six of these and well, 16, I'm making 16 of these. And almost done spreading. Now, of course, you can add more if you want your pudding layer to be a little thicker. It's a personal preference. I do have a little bit of pudding left. I could go through and kind of add a little bit more to these, but I try not to spend too much time being my classic OCD self 
<laughs> on these live streams. So, plastic wrap and refrigeration. Now, when I was doing these uh, yesterday, I pre-made a batch. I'm going to bring those out now. So I pre-made a batch of these yesterday, and um, I ended up pressing the plastic right down on top of the pudding. Again, so I don't get that crusty in, on my pudding since we're not doing a whipped cream layer. And I was a little bit nervous that the pudding might just come off when I pulled it off. But the other trick to these is, obviously I'm gonna refrigerate them right now, but before unmolding, I actually stick them in the freezer for about 20 minutes just to help all of those layers firm up enough that I can unwrap it without it just being a mess. Because you want your final uh, dessert lasagna to be soft, but unmolding them is a little bit tricky. So just sticking them in the freezer for 20 minutes was enough uh, for me to get them right out. So I'm gonna bring some of those out and show you. So here's the batch I made yesterday. Oh, <laughs> I thought you guys were looking at the desserts, but you were not. So yesterday I, I made these. I threw them in the freezer to pop some out and plate them. As you can see, it peeled right off the pudding. And when I use this, it just pops right out as well. And then I can take these out. I can put them on a plate. I'm going to put it back in the fridge and let them come back down to a nice refrigerator temperature. This is a super easy way uh, to get these out. And I'll show you one of these as well. Because again, I was worried that the pudding would be so soft, I wouldn't be able to unmold these. So as you start to pull it away, there you go. And just like that, it's unmolded. So I pop these in the freezer for about, I'd say uh, 30 to 40 minutes. And if you don't like, like that sharp edge, you can kind of just smooth that with your finger. Again, my family's gonna eat these. If you're serving them to other people, make sure you use gloves. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and bring out the ones that I already unmolded and finish this dessert off. Okay, so here we go. Here's ones that I unmolded earlier today and then put in the fridge so they'd be back to normal temperature to work with right now. I'm going to bring oh, my fresh whipped cream over. I'm actually going to beat it really fast to bring it back up to stiff peaks. because it was sitting over here on the side while we were doing the rest of the video. All right, so fresh whipped cream, a spoon, and some more of the mini shortbreads. Uh, Tina, your friend is having a baby boy in October and these would be great for her shower. Yes, and the f fun part is you could do them in so many different flavors or colors. All right. So we're just going to plop some on. And I, there's not much that I like more than the nice amount of fresh whipped cream. So you can go with as little or as much as you want. If you don't want to plop, you could use a piping bag and you could pipe some on and serve it that way and a little bit more decorative. Now on top, you could add like some chocolate shavings or some sprinkles. You could do a drizzle of caramel sauce. Uh, what I ended up going with was the mini shortbread cookies because why have just one shortbread when you could have two? All right, plop and whoop, plop. I just stick the cookies right on top. 
You even do, oh, that's a little half one. Perfect. You can do little mini ones on the mini cookies. And you can do as many as you want. I just chose to do two on each when I was doing it. And oh, almost out of my bag. And one more. Boop. And there we go. There you have plated easily and quickly these salted caramel shortbread cookies. So good. Uh, baking D, I have for them. These look delicious. Thank you so much. Uh, Shelly, I'm not sure why they're called lasagnas. Can you please explain? Um, I don't know that one either. <laughs> we talked about that at the beginning of the video. Uh, I grew up just calling these layered desserts, uh, but in the past, I want to say three or four years over on Pinterest, uh, and as people were sharing different versions of these desserts, they started being called dessert lasagnas, and I think it's simply because they're layered, like a lasagna is layered. Um, so shortbread base, no baked cream cheese layer, pudding layer, fresh whipped cream layer, and then a decorative layer. So a couple different layers of desserts. Uh, what kind of cupcakes are they? They are not cupcakes, Allison. Dessert lasagnas. Great question. Uh, please make a cake soon. Um, great project that the kids can help with too. Yes, this is my third time making this dessert. Um, and my kids have probably enjoyed making them as much as they've enjoyed um, eating them. Uh, it's fun to do this assembly line style, like uh, one person put in the cookies, one person added the cream cheese layer, one person added the pudding layer, you know, people in between were spreading. Everybody, who doesn't love using a scoop, right? My kids love using those cookie scoops. So it worked out really well, really easy. We actually made these while we were on our road trip uh, last week, last week, two weeks ago. <laughs> um, and the kids had a great time with them. So that is the full dessert. Uh, if anybody has any questions about it, let me know. My favorite part of the video is right now when I get to take a bite of the dessert. So ooh, whipped cream on me. Now I froze these before I um, unmolded them, like I said, but they've been in the refrigerator ever since. Mmm, mmm, so good. So you can see all the layers. The cookie still has a great crunch. The cheesecake layer and the pudding layer and the whipped cream layers are nice and soft. Great for eating, great for sharing. Now this mini version is probably best to use with a fork on a plate. I'm not getting your hands totally messed up dirty like I'm doing right now. But the little mini versions are perfect for just a bite-sized treat. Big bite. <laughs> but it's still bite-sized. Mm. So depending on how you're serving them, <laughs> um, you might want to have plate and fork on hand or some kind of little grabbing utensil because the pudding and the cream cheese is definitely soft. Um, so you, you know, you're know you going to have messy fingers. So a nice little plate. So now I got at... Um, you can find these uh, salted caramel chocolate shortbreads right now available at Walmarts near you. Or like I said, you can go to the Walker website and uh, using the code AshleyMarie get 20% off through the rest of the month, which is an awesome deal. You know, I'm planning on using it. Um, and uh, if you do go get them locally at a store, you can also get those cute little cupcake stands. And these fit perfectly on that as well. So... When I did photos for the blog post, I grabbed a couple of my ceramic little cupcake stands and put them on that. And then after the pictures were all done, that's what my kids wanted to use to eat them on. So they loved those. There's so many adorable little party-sized and entertaining-sized plates that would be really easy to serve them that way as well. Uh, your projects look so good. Are there any other questions? I'd love to answer anything about dessert lasagnas shortbread cookies. Uh, I've also, working with the Walker shortbread, I've also made um, the marshmallow shortbread vanilla bean cookies uh, where I took their vanilla bean shortbread and I added a layer of fresh marshmallow piped on top and then dipped the whole thing in chocolate. I think those are my new favorite treats. I've made those probably about five times 
since making those for the blog post for walkers. Um, if you're looking for those recipes, go to my site, ashleymarie.com. Uh, it has been such a pleasure being over here on the Walker's Shortbread, uh, the Walker Shortbread Facebook page and meeting new people and having a new audience. Uh, if you are already following me or you're interested in following me, I go and do live cooking show videos like this every week on Tuesdays at this exact time, um, sharing all of my favorite from scratch decadent recipes or cake decorating. Those are my specialties. Um, I don't think there are any questions, so I am going to go off. Um, so one more time, a reminder, walkersshortbread.com, the US channel, which I put the link on the Facebook page. It is uh, us.walkersshortbread.com and use the code Ashley Marie, all one word, A-S-H-L-E-E-M-A-R-I-E. -E -E. You can get 20% off from now through the end of July. July 31st is the last day for that. Um, and I think that's it. My website is ashleymarie.com. You can follow me. All my social media handles are Ashley Marie Cakes. And that is it. Thank you again for Walkers for being such a great partner to work with. I've had so much fun creating these recipes and sharing them with all of you. Uh, Sandra, you love Walkers, right? They're the best. Family-owned company, 120 years old, four ingredient, simple, pure recipes, no color additives, so delicious, so pretty, great for serving. Uh, I love them too, obviously. <laughs> you love my hair. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, all right, so that that is it. Thank you again for, for joining us and for watching. Next week, we'll be back on my Facebook page and YouTube channel sharing another recipe. Um, I decided what I was going to make, and now I don't remember what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, but it'll be a good one. It'll be something that's perfect for summer. <laughs> uh, so thank you again for watching. Thank you, Walker Shortbread. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. And...